Hello guys, how are you? Uh, hope everyone is doing well. Hope your day's been great. We're here to talk about Melody, but I'd like to welcome the chat. And uh, yeah, coming off a, a nice live stream uh, with uh, by Professor Geek and of course Fan Man. That was, that was good. I, I'm so glad that that was perfect too. I was making dinner, I was cooking dinner. It was great. I just wanted to relax from uh, a long day of teaching. So I am relaxed. I will say we're talking about Melody. I have notes, but uh, I haven't looked at them since last night. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, now, everyone, if you guys don't mind, how does the audio sound? Because apparently my, my mic disconnected somehow last time. Um, everything should be connected just fine. So if, if you are hearing like a wet blanket over my face or like a lot of um, room noise, not room noise, but a lot of reverb. That means my that you're not hearing my, my mic. So if you guys can give me a thumbs up on audio, on video. <laughs> I'm looking at the last comment. It says, Wolf 10 Media says, uh, a teacher's never late. She arrives as she is needed. It's true. I've always been punctual. I'm kind of bad about church, though, I will say. I, I kind of get at the end of the worship, you know, for the sermon. I, I should be better. Should be, I shouldn't admit that online. But I read scripture and pray. And so I just want to hang out with Jesus. And then I'm like, oh, I got to get dressed and go to church. So I, I have a good reason. So um, Melissa Harris says hello. And hello to you, Melissa. And Brian is here. Hello. And Dr. Y, how are you doing? And Muhammad, thank you for coming. Now, was it you? I, I thought it was either you, maybe it was you or Dr. Y. I, can't, I couldn't remember which one, um, who is a comic artist, I think, but also learning to compose. So I wonder if that was you, Muhammad, because I think this is your first time. And of course, Big Al, always a pleasure to see you, sir. and planting my flag here. That better not be a euphemism of any kind. And aged boomer. Oh, to Big Al, sorry. Yeah, I just, I just wanna acknowledge all of you guys. And then if you guys wanna talk to me, just of course say sound engraver. Got 12 people on board, that's great. Oh, I guess I, I should beat Nanette Pacelli to the punch and, and say, uh, you know, hit those thumbs up for me. Thank you. Hit them likes. And looks like you guys have some, some dialogue going on already. Okay, now I can acknowledge you because you, you know, you, you're saying hey there. Very good. Dr. Y says, hey, I might not be as active in the chat. I'm going to be drawing drawing tonight. That's perfect. Actually, sometimes that's that, I love that. I love that you're hanging out but doing productive work and you're doing art. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, that That's actually what I do sometimes when when I just I catch maybe it's, it's office hours and I, I've already eaten and I'll just I'll just draft my music. So sometimes I'm not active too because I, I like to work. I actually do like to troubleshoot while listening to the professor and, and Big Al and and all of that. And it's it's it, it's not really multitasking. It's actually it helps me get in the zone. So I appreciate that. I do appreciate that my live stream can do that too. All right, lots of hellos. Oh, um, oh, um, yes, uh, yes, Nanette, hello, Troy, hello, Daniel Craig. Oh, I was, I was about to ask. This is your first time here. Thank you, thank you. You must have heard from the stream that I was having a stream too. So that is fantastic. Um, hope you guys find this insightful, or you could tell your artist friends who are into music, like. Let me tell you about good melody. Um, I was I was gonna do some keyboard work, but I decided just to be lazy and do StreamYard. I was gonna do OBS, um, but it's just it's uh, yeah. I, I did a little bit of troubleshooting. And I could figure it out, but I just wanted to relax and and get in the zone. So my examples are gonna be sung. So you're gonna have to bear with me. I did I did see Daniel Heron somewhere. But uh, it's, a, it's a very active chat. Oh, my goodness. Hello, sir. I'm so happy to see you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. You you always have great points. I I just um, keep doing the work you're doing. I, I really do enjoy your videos. Um, I saw I haven't seen the most recent one, but I saw your your t you know two part videos on on your thoughts on the Snyder Cut and the what what is it doing to fans truly? And I don't really honestly know anything about Superman, but it's it's very insightful and it's it's you know I. I don't know how much the prof has said, but I'm, I'm from the academia. I was a master's in music. So I was in the whole liberal arts uh, world for a long time. And the same stuff is happening over there. I, I mean, I haven't been there for nine years, but yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I was, I was thinking about, you know, plugging my, my music. Maybe I'll do that toward the end here, but I do want to talk about Melody as well. Okay. I think I've acknowledged, oh, wait, I have not acknowledged Owen, Owen Lister, so he is here. Oh, Paladin Demo too. Thank you guys. Thank you all. So hopefully, it's probably not as exciting as comic, comics, but, uh, you know, if you guys have questions about Star Wars, of course, we could talk about Star Wars. But Melody first. Let's talk about Melody. And I kind of want to get right into it before it gets too late because I will be singing and I might go into my head voice and I want to be respectful of my neighbor upstairs. So. Oh, hello, Brandon. Yes. Welcome. Super Collider. What's your main purpose for using it? Um, well, really anything. I'm, I'm trying my very best right now to do live signal processing with my violin and my, my voice sounds. So, you know, any mouth sounds or any live input with violin and voice, mainly violin. Um, hopefully to do sound synthesis, more sound synthesis. It, those two live processing and sound synthesis are real steep learning curves for me, um, has been for quite some time. And I'm gonna get back into that this week. I actually would like to spend the summer really getting better at that. But I also uh, use MIDI protocol and um, Super Collider can send um, messages to Logic Pro and Logic Pro with their inst with with its instruments can play in real time and you can you can do a lot of stuff. I hope to do more live performance um, maybe at the end of June or maybe into July, but definitely this summer. And I'd I'd love to show you all. So, all right. Now, I think I've acknowledged everyone. So, let's get right to it. Let's talk about melody and and what to look for in a good melody, whether you're composing or whether you're just listening to music on the radio and you wonder why, you wonder why the melody is so dry. So I think uh, I didn't have any, hello? Okay, I, I think I hear myself. N nothing on, on audio, it sounds good, it sounds clear. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the chat alone for a little bit, get right into melody. I think the notes are, fairly short, but I want to tell you some components, some ingredients that you could use to compose a good melody or look for, you know, what to look for in a good melody. So I'm going to pull up my notes. Yes, I have notes again. And I will have notes for the Star Wars sequel trilogy music score next week. Be on the lookout for that. It's going to be fun. All right. <clears throat> so, what makes a good melody? There are a few, about four to five major components that can really make or break a real good melody. And I want to talk about the most, or one of the most important, I, I, the first thing that I think of when I think of a melody, and that is contour. That is the melodic line, that, that moving melodic line. You need not just a line, a shape, a contour, you need, you need a moving one because music is a temporal art form. It's, it's the art form that's not instantaneous, like a visual piece of art. Now, that's not to say a visual piece of art can't be linear or lengthy, and, and it's not to say a visual piece of art can't go, um, you know, chronologically, if you will, but with music, I mean, even an instantaneous sound has length, it has reverb, it has decay, it has an envelope shape. So with music as a temporal art form, you need a dynamic line. You have to have rises and falls, tension 
and release. And this includes range. And I would, I would recommend going from an octave, you know, C to C. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was supposed to warm up. C, C, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Sol, Do. Or you can actually go higher. <clears throat> I don't, okay, that's okay. I'm thinking about my neighbor. Um, sol, Do, Sol, Do, Re, Do, Mi, Do. So, you know, you can exceed the octave. So I really do encourage composers to use a lot of range for melodic writing. This is not to say you should use octave displacement. And, you know, if you had a, a, a wide range, like on the piano, go from one C to a C, two octaves below to a C, two octaves high, that's octave displacement. It can be uh, disjointed, uh, but do work with the range of the instrument or the voice. And this is why I think a lot of people are kind of tired of popular music on the radio. It's because they don't really uh, go further than two to three notes and, and at, at very small intervals. So going from a step one, well, they don't sing in seven tones, that would be too experimental. Um, you know, do, re, do, mi, re, do, and that's pretty much it. And they'll just go in sequence while there's a cool bass line or a cool rhythmic section. You know, it's really the post-production instrumentation that makes that melody catchy, but it's not really a melody. I'm very firm with that. A melody is more than two to three notes. Uh, so, you, you know, work with range, work with that dynamic range up to at least an octave, but also exceeding an octave. Uh, with contour, you have intervallic relationships, intervals, the distance between two notes, whether they are skips, you know, from do, re, do, or step. Um, I meant to say steps. <laughs> um, do, re, do, and then skips. Do, mi, do, do, fa, do, do, sol, do, and all of that. I'm very surprised I can remember my solfege because I haven't done it in, you know, eight years <laughs> from my music education major. Oh, and by the way, um, for those of you, you know, when I'm talking about music, just a bit of background. I have a master's in music composition and also a bachelor's in music composition, of course, because I got a master's, um, but also music education. So I have about seven years of higher music education experience and I'm a violin teacher. So I hope what I say is valid, but I think it is. <laughs> Um, so intervallic relationships, going between steps and going between skips. Now, it's not always a series of skips. It's not always a series of steps. Uh, and I'll, I'll give some examples in, in a few minutes. Um, but you want to go between skips and steps to, to have it memorable. We also, for melody, you want to use uh, what I like to call a focal point. Now, focal point actually does mean like the, the center uh, thing that you focus on or uh, something that really uh, has people uh, gravitate to. Uh, but it's not really the centerpiece. Uh, a focal point actually to me in music is actually peaks or or a peak. So, um, well, it, if it's anyone's birthday, happy birthday, but I'm going to use this as an example. Um, so happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So birthday right there. That's, that's the focal point for that melody. You want to, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to make use of it as much as you can or as effective as effectively as you can. Um, I think the point of using a focal point is to maintain the listener's engagement or interest. And it can be more than one. It can be a series of focal points. Now, for contour, if you guys will indulge me, I, I want to do an experiment. Um, I'm going to probably, I'm going to try to show you my desktop because I do want to actually give you a very specific example. A melodic line, which I have mentioned before, um, Tchaikovsky's Symphony Number no. 4, Second Movement. In fact, before I forget, I will just go ahead and write it in the chat. Tchaikovsky's Symphony Number no. 4, Second Movement. And it starts right away with a beautiful haunting oboe. Now, of course, we can have music uh, through, through this wonderful platform, right? Um, so rather than be penalized, I'm going to sing for you, but I want to check something out. I hope I don't destroy StreamYard by trying this out, but I actually want to show you my desktop 
real quick. Let me see if everything's clear. Everything looks good. And let's, let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to screen share my desktop. You might see me with the chat briefly. So I'm going to do a little test. And then you tell me if you can see the music. OK, so uh, actually, it's not letting me. What? Oh, I don't think it's letting me. No, I didn't even see that. It's grayed out. That's that's sad. Oh, well, OK. Probably another reason why I should have done OBS and not be lazy. Darn it. OK, well, maybe that's for another time. Oh, man, that's a beautiful example of a contour. But, you know, um, instead, you know, I, I think this is important. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and go on YouTube and show you the link to this uh, score. Tchaikovsky's. Um, and as, as I do it, I'll just go ahead and, you know, hum, hum the melody. And I had done it last time. And we'll have score. There it is, yeah. Very quickly. I had to pause it before, uh, yeah. I had to pause it before YouTube could catch me. Thank you guys. There we go. Uh, that's the second movement. I think that's after 18 minutes. So uh, you'll, you'll get what I mean. So anyway, sorry for that little diversion. But um, back to my notes and back to contour. Um, we have two melodies going on. We have uh, the A, the first melody, which is, you know, statement A, and then followed by B, uh, a melody following. And, and B leads into a transition. You'll just have to believe me. I was going to show you on the score, but can't, can't. Anyway, um, so for as, as far as contour, I'll do the best I can to sing and then give you kind of a melodic line. Uh, it, it includes steps and skips and also leaps, you know, something that uh, exceeds, um, you know, a fifth. So here it goes. All right. Da, 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 da. That's too that's too low. Um let me try it a higher key. Can't see myself. And then it repeats with an, a, a bit of an extension. So even though you couldn't see that beautiful score that I had prepared for you, um, you can definitely hear the rises and the falls and 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 contour. That that is so imperative in melody. You need contour. You just can't you can't do little you know bumps. You need leaps. You need steps. Uh, you know, just think of it as a you know a silhouette of a skyline for a portrait or. Think of it as mountaintops and valleys, you know, you know, that topography we're, we're, we see contour everywhere. So why not have it in a, in a temporal art form in that kind of space as well? So that is the first thing. Back to my notes. All right. Now, it's not enough to have contour alone. It's not enough to have a line alone. We actually do need a sense of time. Music is bound to time. As I had said before, it's a temporal art form. So to have an understanding of time, wherever you're from, whatever language you speak, whatever culture you're from or region of the world, uh, we have to have an understanding of time. So we need structure. We need that kind of syntactical structure. So in order for melody to work, we have to have, uh, we have to put that contour, that specific contour 
with, uh, uh, it has to have its own structure. So the first thing to do, uh, one, one of the most effective ways you can do this is using repetition and, and having a component uh, of a melody like rhythm, for instance, be repeated. And so I, I would actually say that rhythm is probably one of the more common things to use to, to repeat a melody. Um, if you guys had seen my, I did, I did a suction motion with my hand, uh, my two hands. Um, but if, yeah, if you guys had seen my live stream uh, last week, I did hum the for, uh, phrase Pavan, Opus 50, which I'm also happy to type that in. All right. Well, no, no complaints about audio. So thank you guys. Anyway, so the Pavon Foray. Foray was um, a French composer of uh, late 1800s, getting into the early 1900s. And he is fantastic with harmony, but he also has a very famous melody um, called the Pavon. And I'm going to, while singing the melody, I'm going to sing it phrase by phrase. And I'm going to try to count out loud. So you, you actually hear the counting enunciated as I, as I sing. <clears throat> so look for repetition, not in the pitches, not in, in the notes that you hear, but the rhythm. One and a two, a three and four and one, a three and four and one of three, uh, sorry, three of one, two, three, four. So that's the first phrase. So you think of that one, two, a three, four, a one and two and three, four. And then he uses that that rhythmic module, and he just bumps it up a pitch to a C sharp. <clears throat> da, <clears throat> it's so high for my voice. Da, 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 And it, it concludes with um, going from F sharp, uh, uh, F sharp to A instead of C sharp. <clears throat> one, a two, three, and four, and one, a three, and four, and one, two, three. I'm, I'm getting count, counting wrong, but uh, I think you get the idea. So repetition in the rhythm, even though the pitches change. However, the intervallic relationships between those pitches, phrase by phrase, uh, remains more or less the same or similar. And speaking of phrasing, let's get into phrasing. So to get a sense of uh, structure uh, with our contour, use repetition. In, in my case, it was with rhythm. And then with phrasing. Now, phrasing um, is important for melody. We have, you know, kind of like a structure of a sentence where we have a clause and then we have a, a concluding uh, thought or idea, another, I think, ending clause. Uh, it's the same way with melody. It's the same way with music. We have what we call a an antecedent and consequent phrase. That's how I was taught. But it's also called the question phrase followed by an answer phrase. And these phrases can range from two to eight bars, maybe more. It depends on two things. It depends on the instrumentation and also depends on the length, the time, um, the, the length, the duration of the actual piece. It also can depend on the time the music was written. Uh, for instance, that Tchaikovsky melody that I had sung previously is 20, by, uh, 20 bars long with a, a first phrase that is eight bars followed by another phrase with an extension that is 12 bars. You also have things like cadence where um, every phrase is, is cadential in that it, it concludes, maybe not it is finished, you know, it's not the end of a sentence, but as we use punctuation in a sentence like a comma, 
uh, we have some cadence with our melody as well. I realized I, I needed to get my keyboard. <laughs> I was like, I have a digital keyboard in my living room and I didn't think to, to bring it until like two minutes in. <laughs> um, so something that is uh, uh, deals with phrasing, maybe a, a pretty simple children's song, for instance, can have um, a, a very even good balance, a comp um, something you can comprehend as far as phrasing. My throat's getting dry, so if you'll excuse me, <laughs> uh, let me grab some water. <clears throat> I think I was I was I was doing online lessons today in the music studio, and I think I was shouting at my iPad because uh, I couldn't hear. So I think <laughs> my voice is going. Um, but uh, you know, um, a, a very common way of phrasing is a, is a children's song, like um, the the song. Aware, aware, has my little dog gone? So if you want to sing with me, go right ahead. You guys should know it, right? Uh, so, oh, where, oh, where has my little dog gone? Yeah, that's the first phrase. Uh, it's actually um, the first half of the first phrase. Oh, where, oh, where can he be? So that's the first half. With his ears cut short and his tail cut long. Oh, where, oh, where can he be? So you have those four sentences, and, and it's the two sentences that make up the first phrase and the second two sentences, or, or I'm sorry, not the first sentence. Where, aware has my little dog gone? Yeah, you can say that as a question. Oh, where, oh, where can he be? So that's the end of the first phrase. With his ears cut short and his tail cut long, first half of the second phrase, oh, where, oh, where can he be? So you really want to consider this phrasing. And... Uh, uh, cadence uh, with music actually can can happen really based on the harmony and the chords. So um, it's very common to begin with the tonic, begin with that one chord. Um, you know, you know, in the C major, um, do mi do mi sol mi do. That's your one chord, and then sol ti re ti sol. That's your five chord. And with oh where where has my little dog gone? That goes between one and five all the time. So we start with do mi sol, oh where, oh where has my little dog gone? Sol, ti, re, ti, sol. You're ending on a five chord. Uh, we, we call that as a, um, we call that a half cadence and that's quite common, not just in classical music, it's, it's common in a lot of these songs and popular songs. Um, and actually with this children's song, it's it's just going between one and five, one and five. It's, it's not moving anywhere else, so. So use phrasing, use cadence. And if you want to know the technical term of a, a concluding chord to, to finish the piece, uh, a common cadence to conclude the melody is either the perfect authentic cadence ending on do in the bass or the imperfect authentic cadence, which is uh, an inverted chord. I always recommend my composition students to end uh, where, where, where do is seated at the bass. Now, as far as structure, um, I think you can also work with melodies that have little to no repetition. So I was thinking of the, uh, the, the song, the Israeli traditional song, Shalom Chavarim. And if I'm botching the Hebrew, I apologize. But this, act, this song actually has no, um, no real repetition as far as rhythm, but a little bit of phrasing. <clears throat> Ooh, that was close. The water got on my keyboard. <clears throat> shalom kavarim, shalom kavarim, shalom, shalom. Leitrayot, leitrayot, shalom, shalom. So there's a little bit of uh, phrasing because the text is repeated. Shalom kavarim, shalom. Shalom Kavarim. So, so the text is repeated. And so there's repetition there. But as far as the melody is concerned, we have a little bit of that rhythm. Shalom Kavarim, Shalom. And then we, we just escalate, uh, not es escalate, but um, we go higher. And that, that's a great use of uh, where the phrasing isn't the same set of pitches followed by the same set of pitches, but, you know, use the same rhythm, and but just go higher. That's a very effective use of the melody. I think
think I'm almost done with my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, there. So that is a uh, structure. So we talked about contour and putting the contour in structure. All right, real quick, just a few other items, and these are shorter. Length and pacing. Length and pacing is really important. When I was studying contemporary classical music, you know, the, the music of the 20th century, and also my professors uh, at the University of Washington, um, they, they would talk about melody in a, a rather unconventional way. I, I get what they're saying, but I actually do have a very firm uh, position on what melody is. Melody is more or less pretty short. It, it can have extension, it can, can work with transitions, it can work with a lot of material, but if you write a 20 minute orchestra piece with no theme, with no statement, with no real melody that you can <clears throat> remember, that, that that's that's memorable. Maybe you don't sing it, maybe you can't quite sing it, but as long as it's memorable, <clears throat> you can't have, excuse me, my voice is really going, probably won't sing anymore. Um, but you can't go uh, with, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you can't go 20 minutes with a, a melodic line and call it, melody. It could be melodious. It could be at the foreground. It could be in the foreground of, of a piece of music. But it, if it's not grasped, if you, if you can't really hear it or remember it, um, even, you know, even after, you know, five minutes or so, then I would just safely call it melodic. It, like it's a melodic line. Melodic line and melody actually are two different things, in, in my opinion. Melody is a concrete thing you can sing to um, for whatever whatever function it is, maybe or a theme in a in a film, melody is, is very specific. It has a very specific de definition. So if you if you just do a, a line that is at the center of uh, the the piece of music, or it's in the foreground, and it goes on for twenty minutes with no real grasp, no real understanding, even if it has contour, and even if it has a little bit of structure, but no phrasing, no cadence, none of that kind of syntactical expression, uh, then just just call it, oh, this is a melodic line. But it to me, it's not a melody. My professors, they if they're watching, I don't think they are. Um, they they might strongly uh, disagree with that. But I, I just I just call it melodic writing. I don't call it an actual melody. So length and pacing is really, really important. Uh, if if under two minutes, both the melody and phrasing should be short, between two and four bars. Um, I was, I was gonna give you some examples, you know, some scores, um, Mozart's duets. I think um, actually, if you want to check those out as well. I think I just blew my voice, guys. <laughs> uh, that was right. Oh, 487. There we go. <clears throat> very short, very short melody, very uh, syn syntactical and, and, and to the point. I, I really like the Baroque and early classical because they're they're just to the point. It's wonderful. Um, also, Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto is it starts on a very strong melody for I think eight bars, uh, maybe even shorter than that. I think it's it's comprised of a primary melody about two two phrases, two bars each, but then it just extends. Now, um, this is interesting with the violin concerto because it, it's, uh, the composer is is at liberty to, to just go off into different things to demonstrate the violinist's virtuosity. So even if the melody itself, that the main melody is quite short, the use of ex the extensions and the digression in the melody is quite appropriate. All right, I may have mentioned um, motion in melody, there must be a sense of progression that has also a satisfying conclusion. Now, the songs I I, I was going to sing for you, um, I, I, I just can't. <laughs> um, but um, a, a song that you might think, you know, that maybe you were taught in grade school or elementary school is She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain, if you just kind of uh, sing it. Or, or hum it, you know, it uses the same line over and over again. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Pause. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Another pause. Now, it's the same text. 
She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. So the text is the same. It's 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 repetitive, but there's a lot of um, uh, range with the uh, with with the melody. It's quite fun to, to sing and also uh, fun to play on 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 fiddle. And the one I really wanted to sing, but my voice will just just go live. Uh, just it'll just stop. You won't even hear me. Um, one one really good use of of melody, in particular motion of melody, is uh, I believe the Lutheran hymn "Crown Him with Many Crowns." It's a sixteen bar melody, two eight bar phrases, and it just even though it's it's very metric, it has to be because it, it's it you're meant to sing it as a large congregation. Um, it, it's very metric as far as the rhythm. It's it's very stately. But man, it goes between different chords, um, and the one chord, the five chord using the half cadence and um, the line, awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. It goes between a one and a four chord and then actually uses what we call secondary uh, dominant motion, which actually uses a chord which acts as a representative of another chord leading into another chord. It's, it's kind of, I, I would have to show you on piano. <laughs> but what what I'm, stressing is that that line, that third line of that, that first verse uh, is packed with some harmonic action. And then we have this plagal cadence where you go from a four to a one. We also, plagal cadence uh, is also called the amen cadence because as, as you finish the, the, the singing with amen, it goes from four to one. I hear it in my head, probably doesn't make sense to you guys out there. Um, and finally, so we touched on contour, structure, length, and pacing, and motion. And finally, it's, I think, really a key ingredient, it's empathy. Now, you can have a, you can have a melody that is more, um, you know, oh, beautiful, beautiful, America the Beautiful. I, actually, I think there's some sentiment to that uh, song, but maybe it, it's not so sentimental to people. They just sing it in their elementary school or at different, uh, maybe 4th of July, something like that. I actually really love the melody. Um, so it doesn't, it, it can serve as a function or a ceremony like Pomp and Circumstance by Elgar, you know, the, um, the, the piece you hear for every high school graduation. Um, so it can be used as a function, but I really do think that the, the most successful melodies really draw on empathy of some kind. Melody must tell a story. This could be programmatic for an actual story, for a film, for an opera, or it can be absolute, where, where it's just the music itself and you have your own in perspect, uh, uh, introspection and also um, your own narrative. So, of course, why not? John Williams the force theme draws a lot of empathy, uh, of sense of wonder and intrigue and mystery. Uh, the the track, or not the track, well, it is a track, but um, the, the music that I love so much that I, I touched on with uh, the May the Force, uh, May the Fourth, uh, was Jedi Fury, where, where Luke finally uh, has that last duel with Darth Vader and, and overcomes him and then um, says no to the dark side ultimately, and saves his father. Jedi Fury, I mean, oh, it's like, it's a very simple melody, but it's so good. And uh, um, another, well, we're, we're going to touch on Henry Mancini uh, on my channel the following Saturday on the 13th with Charade. That's gonna be fun. Um, but I was gonna, I was gonna sing Moon River for you. I was, <laughs> I was gonna, that's gonna be my highlight. Um, you know, maybe if my voice recovers, but uh uh, I don't, I, I, I know I'd be pushing it, but um, if I feel a little bit better and look at the chat, um, then maybe I'll sing it. But um, I think those are the main components. You, you need contour, you need structure, you need appropriate length, appropriate pacing and motion, and also empathy. I thought this was going to be more or less a, a, a composition lesson, Maybe I'll do that someday. I don't think I have that planned. Um, but then the more I was thinking, I was like, no, this is just more what I'm touching on. So hopefully, whether you are in music or not, or learning how to compose, just consider these things. They're really important. And, you know, for, for those of you who are interested in really getting serious about composing music, I know there was one of you. <laughs> um, I, I would I would definitely consider doing um, 
small, small tutorials on that as well with a piano or a violin, probably piano. Piano is easier to, to do that with. Um, so that is that. Hopefully you guys are all well. Those are my notes. Um, hopefully you like that lecture. Coming on, man, minute 40. Man, that was a long lecture, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's uh, let's see the chat, see how you guys are doing. And I hear my microphone, so that's good. I'm just going to practice scrolling very, very quickly until I see my name. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't you do that last time, Big Al? It's true. It is true. Well, Owen, I mean, like, unless you're 11 years old, I, I wouldn't expect you to. Does Fan Man know my rule about being appropriate, by the way? <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Cause you're Catholic, man. I'll, I'll hold you accountable. Like, like a good sister in Christ. <clears throat> Paladin Demo says, I think I got a melody. It's been a while, so don't judge. John 40? How do you pronounce his last name? Centerfield. By the way, you guys, I'm really thinking about doing this. Um, what say you... Maybe, I don't know if I could do this every week, but maybe a couple times a month where I'm just live, maybe on a Saturday afternoon, and it's like 30 to 50 minutes, maybe an hour, depending. And you guys just recommend me stuff, and then I'll have my first impressions, because you guys you guys make all these recommendations. I was like, I should do this live. <laughs> but I would be objective. I'd be kind, but I would be objective. So Centerfield, I'll have to remember. Genre? Year? That would help. Yeah. <laughs> Good point, Aged Boomer. That is a good, good point. It, no, it's ex exactly like that. Like Cardi B. Do, 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 it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's, it's like a Dadaism for the 21st century. Yeah, that, that's the thing is like they, they rely, they rely on really good production, post-production. And they have it because they have the millions of dollars, but it's like, if these people just came to to to, to music producers and uh, people who really knew their stuff about music, they'd they'd get their stuff ripped up to shreds, and then they they'd say you know, they'd show them the door. I, I just oh the quality. The only quality I hear is actually that actual production quality. That that's really it with with these uh, up and comings. Well, now that Fan Man's here, like, it's going to be such a huge chore to get through all this. So I'm going to go through this fast. Okay, here's, here's, here's Professor Geek. Do you have links to any diagrams of a B melody following an A melody and so forth? I'd be curious to compare it to the diagrams of how subplots should follow the main plot. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, I should do that. We should do a comparison. We should do a comparison of story and music. Um, I'll, I'll actually write. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll write a I'll write a very popular form. It's called ABA form. It's also known as sonata form. Beethoven and Mozart were pretty particular. Uh, they they were really known for this, where you have an exposition. Um, so not not so much a plot b plot in a story. Um, but exposition, which is, is a musical theme or a musical statement, followed by um, a digression of sorts from, from the harmony, from the actual melody, and then um, a recapitulation. So I don't think, I don't know if it's close to what, I think we can make some comparisons. Uh, now, as I understand, and, and, and you can correct me on this, isn't the B story uh, not inferior, but isn't it a less kind of story. So if you had, um, if you had a romance in a military action, you know, science fiction 
story, for instance. But the romance was the B story. It's it's not the main goal. It's not the main objective of, of these characters and, and the antagonists and all this. Um, with with you know the ABA form, the the B melody is just as important. Um, but that second movement of the Tchaikovsky, um, that that man, I wish I I wish I knew this beforehand. I would have been on OBS, guys. I would have been on OBS if I if I knew I could get to my uh, show you my desktop. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing these live streams for a while, so it's bound to happen. Brian says, so melody can't be monotone. In other words, really not, really not. You're thinking of you know, um, recitative in opera. Recitative is a, a technique or form in opera where in, if it's not a, a melody or an aria of, of a main character, like a soprano, for instance, they do recitative, which they are singing, but they're singing very uh, swiftly. Uh, they're singing very quickly um, to get through the plot much better. So it'd be like dialogues uh, speaking quite fast, but with with um, very minimal pitches. Um, so, but it, no, as far as the construct, no, it's not a melody. And you can't you can't justify well, saying like, oh well, I have this for the melody. It's just you know one pitch, but I have all this going on in the bass and harmony. I was like, well, that's great. But what you have is not a melody. It could be uh, an effect, like an embellishment. Um, so, so sometimes I'll have like a kind of a, a, like an arpeggio or arpeggiator where it just goes between chords and it's more of an embellishment. It's not, it's not an actual melody that, yeah, yeah. We're getting into some deep stuff. I think, I think Fan Man is, smacking the prof around on my on my chat. I don't accept that. Oh, okay, Daniel Craig brings up a good point. That's the precise <clears throat> that's the precise thing I say about any of this modern music out there. Production is great. Yeah, that's the thing. The production is good. The technology, the technology, the recording technology, the studio technology all the stuff that you hear online that I have on Spotify and Bandcamp and SoundCloud, all of this is, is done with less than $1,000 worth of equipment. My computer, my MIDI keyboard, my software. That's it. Maybe my condenser bike right here. Under $1,000. Now, actually, to be fair, I do pay a mixing and master uh, artist, uh, but he's really affordable. So it's still under $1,000. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but that is that. So... By the way, guys, sometimes I refer back to these uh, streams that I have to, to see if I've missed any of your comics, uh, uh, comments, and it turns out, it turns out that I do. Um, I, I do see, oh, I didn't know he wrote that, and, and, and I, I didn't see it on, on StreamYard, and I like to be on StreamYard because there's an awful delay on, uh, on, on YouTube, and it really disorients me. So if, if I'm missing you guys, I do, I do apologize, and I, I try to consider what you do say that I do miss at a later time. <laughs> Why Muhammad? Yes. Now, are you coming to, uh, are, are you going to join us uh, on the chat for charade? Have you seen charade? Have you seen any of the videos that Mancini did? Now he's known for Pink Panther, which I love the melody. I could play that on violin, you know, even if it's in front of a thousand people, I've got my Pink Panther. It's, it's fine. I've got some Pink Panther on my violin, Pink Panther experience. I did not care for the movie. I didn't care for the humor. It was slow. It dragged on. But the one highlight of that whole movie was the Pink Panther song. Actually, you know what? What was good about that movie was um, the animation short right before the actual drama. <laughs> I laughed at the animation short. I love Pink Panther cartoons. Uh, th that real slapstick, you know, uh, is it called pantomime where, where the character doesn't speak? It's great stuff. Some of it's cheesy, but it's also some of it's really good. Yes, uh, that is correct. He did write the Pink Panther theme. And so he composed he composed um, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Charade, and Two for the Road, I think. All Audrey Hepburn uh, films. Cary Grant, Richard Burton... Um, I think he wrote 
music for two for the road. I can't remember, but I like his, I like his music. I don't know if you guys are aware of a cartoon where, where Pink Panther uh, tries to audition. He tries to learn violin to be a world famous violinist. And, and he, without in, getting an invite or even being a part of the orchestra, he just waltzes in and joins the orchestra and, and they're playing Beethoven and the inspector, you know, the antagonist, the main antagonist, he, he's, he's the conductor, of course. Um, and, and they're trying to do Beethoven and he's, he's, he's doing Pink Panther. And then finally, uh, Pink Panther, of course, wins at the end. Um, and, and I think does a big band version of Pink Panther. Um, he's conducting his own Pink Panther theme. And, uh, and then at the end of the cartoon, um, they, they pan to a real life uh, auditorium where uh, outside auditorium where Henry Mancini himself is, is clapping. <laughs> uh, so it's good stuff. I can't remember the title of the cartoon though, but it's he's trying to play violin and and kind of interfere with the orchestra. Muhammad says, "I don't know how fam familiar you are in the lore of Office Hours, but we we ha have some lack of restraint in appropriateness." Yeah, and I it's not my channel, and if it gets a little too much, I I, I politely exit. No one knows. <laughs> Um, not too often though. I, yeah, I, it's very, very good stuff. No, actually, no, you weren't, but you had said something. Oh, something like that. Yeah. Maybe just a dad joke. No, nothing inappropriate that I saw. I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> I have to, I have to tell all newcomers. <laughs> it's lonely being this funny. I bet it is. I bet it is. No, you're good though. And I, I do like your content. I love your car videos. Oh, just, oh, skip chat. I can't stand it when, you know, you're scrolling down and then it takes you all the way down. Yeah, that's right, Owen Lister. That's exactly right. All right, let's see, where are we? I do, I thought, I thought, cause I've been teaching, I've been singing. And so I thought I'd be fine. But man, crown him with many crowns, I mean. And I wanted to sing in, in E flat. I mean, come on. Crown him with many crowns. And then that's it. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. Wait and see, sound engraver. Oh, dude. Oh, I gotta look. Oh, I was just thinking about that term the other day. Dies Let me let me go back to that. I, I I have to. I have to refer back to that. That is, I believe. I think so, but I'd have to listen to it. Man, it's been years. Yes, uh, to correct, uh, or not to correct, um, to to add on to that, yes. Um, you know, being empathetic to, to draw emotion. Um, when, when Craig was on, I remember going back to what he was uh, saying, referring back. It, sometimes when you're talking to someone live, sometimes it's, in a way, in a strange way, it's kind of hard to listen and, and keep up when, when, when you're thinking of things and, and looking at chat as well. Um, so I, I wanted to refer back to uh, what he had said. Um, but something I really did resonate was, um, you know, for a musician, whether singer or instrumentalist, you, you have to give the person permission to feel. And I could, I could st uh, stay true to that as a musician, as a violinist, but I think that's important in all art forms. You know, um, I think one reason why people have uh, uh, are having a, such a hard time with uh, nihilism and 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 you know uh, kind of whether decadence or or the the degeneracy of um, what's happening to franchises or characters or you know people becoming hopeless is because they want to feel something they want to feel something I was actually listening to a, 
uh, a video of literature devils uh, yesterday. And he actually had a pretty logical uh, hero's journey arc. Um, he, he didn't agree uh, with, he, he vehemently disagrees with uh, what, what Last Jedi did to Luke Skywalker, although it was J.J. Abrams. It did not start, it did not start with Ryan Johnson. Anyway, that, that's for another live stream or talking until midnight. <laughs> um, oh, that, no, that's for next week because I'm, I'm talking about the sequel trilogy next week. Um, but, you know, he, he, Literature Devil was talking about, um, you know, uh, he, he actually had a pretty good idea of how Luke could have fallen, even though I don't like that, even if it made sense in the story. Um, and so even in a, in a logical way, if it were to happen to a person, we still want that hero, that, that, that hero. I, and it's the same with, with music. You, you, people want the, they want the permission to feel they, they, they want the performer to, to give them access to just being human, you know, and, you know, and that's why, um, you know, as a little kid, I'd always get a little embarrassed when, you know, I'd go to a concert, uh, you know, a symphony concert, and, you know, there'd be these older patrons crying and stuff like that. But now that I'm getting older myself, it's it's like, I get it. I, 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 I want to be moved. People want to be moved. And so I think empathy with your melody and, and writing melody is, is, is important. And by the way, that takes work. And it doesn't have to be totally, you know, emotional. I mean, my my melodies um, for my my last two albums they're they're just they're just fun they're just chill they're just relaxed um, they're they're just you know you're just kicking back and, and and enjoying it so so permission for that too but I I think that's why people are really getting tired of the the treatment of these different stories and these different characters is because you're not allowing the viewer to feel something to aspire to do something. To, 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 be, to be given that permission to love something or yeah, isn't that, isn't that strange? Now, now that I think about it, it's like people have this disdain for people loving things. It's like, you're not allowed to love this. It's like, man. So yes, empathy. I, I do would like, um, I would recommend to, to put some heart, some emotion. It could be intellectual. I'm, I'm, intellectual. I've been intellectual most of my life. And as an, as an academic, I was really intellectual to a fault. And um, you, you got to have some human connection. I think writing science fiction ha ha has helped me center a little bit more on, on even my electronic music. Brian says, now you're making me think of all those battle themes by nu uh, Nobuo Uematsu, uh, composed for the Final Fantasy games. Oh man, yes. You know, I, I don't know if you were around for, uh, um, I don't know how many streams ago it was, but um, when whenever I get to the skill level, I will cover those Final Fantasy songs. I don't know when, that could be years from now. Now I'm not, I'm not into uh, covering music. Um, uh, a lot of people, say, oh, that's how you get well-known, Michelle. You know, that's how you'll get your YouTube count and subscription. Cover songs, cover, you know, cover Cardi B. <laughs> I'm, they don't say that. They would, they, I don't think they would have the nerve to say that. Um, but uh, no, I don't want to cover music. I don't want to cover other people's songs on violin, but it would sound so good on violin. I'm like, I'm sure it would. Uh, but have some other violin person do it. <laughs> I want to do my own stuff, but Uematsu, uh, 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 oh, what's his name? Ah, oh. Uematsu. Yes, yes to all Final Fantasy. I would do the Final Fantasy VII battles. Um, I'm not a fan of the, the final battle. I know, I know Sephiroth is a cool character. He's a cool villain. I, I didn't get. I, I actually, I never played these games, so I don't know. I don't know about the gameplay in the story. Um, but as far as the music is concerned, it, I, I didn't get the one wing angel, um, but I like the da -da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, gets all prog rock and yes. So yes, I, it's good stuff. My favorite. Oh man, Brian, what do you think of the battle 
and the big bridge with Gilgamesh, Final Fantasy V. I love that battle theme so much. I can listen to it on repeat. Actually, there's this great, oh man. I'd have to go on my YouTube channel and scroll down my, my liked videos, um, but there's this great uh, 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 violinist. I, I don't know his name, um, but I think he's based in Japan. And he he does some some real hard shredding violin on the Final Fantasy. It's good stuff. All right, let me catch up on comics. Oh, thank you, thank you for clarifying, Molten Media. That's great. Yes, Moonlight Sonata is beautiful. I actually I had a professor in Washington. He lived in a pretty well-to-do area with his wife. He had like, by the time I moved out of Seattle, he had like three large houses. I don't know what went into his head to get another house in Queen Anne, um, but he needed he and his wife needed space because he was he was a Brahm he was a Brahms uh, he was a scholar on Brahms on Johann Brahms. Um, he was also an archivist, you know, recording all these things uh, regarding Brahms. And his wife was a pianist, it probably still is, they're probably still around. And they had, I think, eight to nine at the time I was there, which was about nine years ago, eight to nine piano replicas of different time periods. And so she played for us Moonlight, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata on a Beethoven period piano replica. And it is so different from the grand piano. And I was sitting next to the piano and it, you were transported to something, some fan fantasy, some maybe art or things that were inspired by the, the German poetry of the time or, you know, like Goethe and, and or, or some painting. It, it was, it was pretty surreal. Owen Lister says, I actually got a me melody for you to check out. It's called Marvelous Bio Booster from the anime Giver. Is that how you pronounce it? It combines violin, electric guitar, and bass. It sounds really awesome. Yeah, that does sound awesome. I definitely will. Who's um who's the composer? Um, Hamid says, I wanted the melody of my hero theme to be like I dreamed a dream or move into more. John Williams fanfare march deal. So how would I do that without ripping it off? Oh, well, yeah, that's that's a good I mean, for a fee, I could tell you. No, just kidding. <laughs> um look around. Start start with the um start with the march. Uh l l well, with John Williams. See, John Williams took from the people before him. Mahler, uh, Stravinsky, um, probably uh, some of the English composers of the early 1900s. You have to go back. You have to go back. Now for fanfare, I would recommend going, especially with the Baroque stuff. Um, oh, uh, I would I would take a look at, oh, you know, I mean, start, you, you just got to start listening to music and listening to a lot of music. Um, okay. I can't remember who the composer was. I think his name was Jeremiah Jeremiah Clark, but I, can't, I don't think that was him. But he was he's he's a good Baroque composer as well. Uh, check out the Baroque period. Uh, start with that. Start start with Bach. Start with Handel. Um, Handel's uh, Zadok the Priest, um, which I think is actually the England um, sports music. When I found that out, like Cambridge or something, I can't remember. When I found that out, I was kind of jilted. I was like, that's that's not for England only. <laughs> and it's it's from Handel. He's he's German. Um yeah, I'm trying to I'll 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 I think that's the title of the song. Um Handel. Corelli and Vivaldi, the older ones, really worked with the stringed instruments. I want I want you to think of organ and brass and and all of that. So uh, start with the Baroque, and with 
because it Baroque makes sense to everybody. <laughs> Stravinsky, maybe not so much. Um, but, you know, look to where John Williams looked, you know, look to where he was um, in, inspired because he, he did a lot. He did a lot of that stuff. Um, Hulse, the planets. The Hulse is kind of chewy. Oh, you know what? Oh, dude. Uh, the Tchaikovsky. This is this is a good opening to a symphony. Tchaikovsky Symphony Four. So just you know, just start with that. The first movement. It's got some crazy unified brass, and it's mm, yeah, it's good. I hope I'm not skipping a lot of people. Now the time I hope to wrap up is 11:30. Okay. <laughs> And you guys could all leave chat. Man, 20 people watching them. I, I feel I feel honored. I hope I made sense. I feel like I'm skipping a lot, but it looks like you guys are having a a lot of uh, dialogue back and forth. By the way, I just I just love how Muhammad says the lore of office hours. I was thinking lore of Final Fantasy, lore of Star Wars. <laughs> so office hours has it has its own lore cemented. I think um I think for a long time I was fairly dissuaded from watching office hours for the longest time because um I think one of the first ones I saw was uh the professor and Big Al's response to Stranger Things number uh, season 3. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, I should check out. <laughs> what? He he did not. That's interesting because if that's the case. Great mouse detective. Okay, I had I had three iconic films go like I had three favorite Disney films. Great mouse detective was one of them. Yep, great mouse. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting for kind of a British, uh, you know, Victorian setting. That's it. That is interesting. I'll, I'll check that out. I, I, I would have no idea. Uh, great mouse detective. I was obsessed with as a kid, and and then it got to uh, Beauty and the Beast because Belle was my favorite princess. But then it got to Milan. Mulan, she's not considered a princess, but her, that story, whether it's fiction or not, or historically accurate or not, or true to the culture or not, I don't care. It was a good story. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was obsessed with um, those three films. Great, yeah, great mass detective. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I, I, th I just thought the humor, I saw the end of that movie and uh, I remember looking at the movie. I was like, that's so stupid. <laughs> but if people like it, that's fine. It was just it was just not my there's a lot of cheating going on, too. I, I can't find that humorous, even even if it's a parody. It, it, it's weird. It's really weird. Not not a parody, but just something made fun of. No, no, I haven't. So Owen Lister says, did you see the inspector shorts? They're made by the same people who did the Pink Panther shorts. I'll, I'll check that out because I think I had like a, I think there was one weekend where I was just binging on the Pink Panther cartoons. And uh, I'll, I'll check out the inspector. Now, are, are they as funny? Because I feel like the inspector's only there to be that, uh, you know, force, that rival against... Uh, Pink Panther. All right. Thank you, Fan Man. You are a natural edu uh, educator. I wish I had you as a music teacher in high school. I sang in choir, but flunked music, mu music appreciation in college. The math of music tripped me up. In music, there was math and music appreciation. I, I, I find those those classes quite dry. Um, because you have to you have to go from 
the 50, no, you have to go from the 1300s to all the way to popular music, at least up to the 1980s, maybe 1970s. And that's a lot to cover um, in, in a semester. Thank you though, I appreciate that. Coming from you actually, because you're, you're a bit of an educator yourself. So that means a lot to me. Dr. Y says, Mancini also did the soundtrack for the Glenn Miller story, The Great Race and Condor Man. Or, con am I, did I say that right? <laughs> Looks familiar. Really? I, you know, I need to see those movies. I haven't seen those mo movies. Um, Dies Irae, 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 sometimes I, Dies, Dies Irae, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, through the Mad Max Fury Road. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I have to look at these again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Latin, when you know it, is, is really uh, beautiful to sing. We need to remind office hours folks to tone down. Oh, well, I mean, like, don't do it for my sake. Do it for your sakes. <laughs> but I think it was, um, I think it was Mr. Matchstick that mentioned like he's he's one way on one channel, another way on another channel, and he I think he was I can't remember the word he used for my channel, but I mean I I appreciate that. It's kind of like you know. You, you want to use the right terms for for people. Like it, I remember, this was a while ago. I I was eating out uh, with a group of people, and I was sitting in front of a vegan, and I wanted some some sort of teriyaki or something. And 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 I asked him. I said, "Can I can I order this?" Because I just I just wanted to be sure he was okay with me eating meat. So, you know, just being respectful to to people. Like so, for instance. I, I drink uh, with in, in moderation like once a year. <laughs> That's moderation. Um, but if, if someone were uncomfortable with me drinking, e even if I never drink and I'm okay with it, um, I, I wouldn't do that in front of them. It's just, yeah. All right. Yes. I mean, I, there, there are straight up lines in the movie that set Luke Skywalker up. People say Ryan John, I mean, he didn't help. <laughs> he certainly didn't help, but he didn't start it. That's the thing. We, we, we must know the truth of when it started, and it started with Force Awakens. Or as Fan Man says, Farce Awakens. As I refer to the, the sequel tragedy. Actually, I don't want to call it even a sequel. I don't think it should be a sequel. I actually, when you see Rise of Skywalker, it's a straight up parody, guys. It's like this this isn't a sequel. It's not actually legitimate to call it a sequel because it's not a sequel to anything. It, it's a straight up parody of Star Wars. It's just what people a, 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 from a man who did not like Star Wars at all to a man who was wanting to fulfill his his own fan wishes. <sighs> But we don't we don't want to bash people, you know. I we want to pray for people. Uh, durable name, welcome. You're dead right about JJ starting Luke's out of character downfall. Um, I walked out of Force Awakens disappointed, thinking, why did Luke turn into such a broken man? I want to talk. Oh, I will save it for June eighth, guys. Come, come to my live stream for June eighth because I will be talking about the musical analysis of the music. Well, I will give a very light analysis, musical analysis of the sequel trilogy score. Same man, John Williams, same man, but there are telltale signs. I, I, I talked about it. I talked about this about Clone Wars season seven. There are telltale signs. Now with Clone Wars, it's a different composer. It's Kevin Kiner. So I thought, okay, they're going to still stick with um, these, these things happening in what, you know, because John Williams himself is doing it. It, it's it is John Williams through and through, and I don't I I'm not here to speculate. His I don't I'm not going to say oh his hands were tied. You know he was forced to do this. No, I'm, I I actually think he 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 believes he he has been in very good company with these um, producers and writers, and execs and all that. Um, I, I I from the interviews that I had seen behind the, the scenes, he doesn't look like. I mean, of course you, you have to dress up any situation, but I I don't think his hands were tied. However, there are some. Real 
things happening with the um, with with the music score that I thought, oh man, I'm gonna give it. I'll be generous. I'll give it 20 years. I'll give it 20 years before it goes totally generic, before it goes into orchestral samples, not with an actual orchestra to electronic music. I'll give it 20 years. I'll be that generous. But Star Wars is, as far as the music is concerned, it's not going to be remotely recognizable 20 years from now. I call it, what, what's today? June the 1st. June the 1st, 2020. So June the 1st, 2040. I'll look back at this video and I will say, you were right. And I will say, you were right. As I say now, you were right. And it'll, it'll just go on forever. <laughs> or it might not. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, though. I mean, if it's happening with the very man himself, John Williams, no. No, they're, they're definitely going uh, down this. Uh, they're, they're going down this road. Well, absolutely, Owen Lister. I just wish I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> um, is the mic too close? Sorry. Um, you're, you're calling out Fan Man and the Prof with that statement? Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to talk to the past me of that. Muhammad says, can you review and analyze music and show how to get the same effects without stealing? Oh, man. Oh, this is like a separate live stream. This is a separate topic. You guys are, you and Agent Boomer give me great ideas for, for topics. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, music can it can totally have the same effects because, like, it, 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 I, I'll put it to you this way. It's like if you wanted to write and design an aspirational hero totally inspired by Superman, you can have that same effect, that same impact that I hear these people are, are talking about when they talk about Superman, how they've impacted them in, in their lives, you can have the exact same effect. It, it's, it's, it's the exact same meaning. It, there are universal truths, so to speak, with, with music. Don't ever feel like you're stealing. You know, we get these crazy lawsuits, these music lawsuits, like, you took my bass line. I got to take you to court. I'm like, you don't own a bass line, bro. <laughs> Just, it's like the ridiculousness of these lawsuits. And, you know, the jury, they're, they're not, there, there was one guy who, I don't know who it was. I think it was a professor, a musicologist. He, he like testified against, I think it was Katy Perry. I, 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 I'm not defending her lifestyle by any stretch of the imagination, but um, there, unfortunately, this is so sad. It was a Christian rap artist who, and a person I listened to for a long time. Uh, he, he he took her to court over this ostinato, this bass, this little bass line. That's it, guys. She didn't even use the same instrument. She didn't use the same register. You know, her uh, his, his his line was high. Hers was a bass. Her, her as like, and then this musicologist thought like this. See, with musicologists, they can get really theoretical. Like, well, let me see, you know, that could, could imply this and, and this and this. I'm like, bro, it's six or seven notes. You can't own that. It's like it's like me trying to um, buy rights to, 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 to the G7 chord. Like, that's mine. <laughs> It's it's ridiculous. Now I, I'm not I'm not making fun of actually what you're what you're pointing out, Muhammad. Um, I would not be scared of co just compose, compose, compose. People say, oh, we steal all the time. That's actually not true. It's 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 just we take take from what we are influenced by all the time. Uh, there is very little that you can do. I mean, it, unless it's straight up the same melody of Luke Skywalker's theme, sure. That, that's a bit of a stretch. And no, you couldn't get away with that, especially with Disney on your tail. <laughs> um, but I, I would I would just uh, work on just uh, composing and, and rehashing the melody, doing it in different ways, maybe on a piano one day, maybe on a different instrument or electronic instrument another day. Um, you would have to go, like the odds of you legitimately copying someone, uh, I, I would say, are just it's just highly highly unlikely so yeah i would just i would just keep composing 
and and then then you can think oh it does it does sound like that melody a little too much then then do another thing all right Quoting Bonnie Tyler, I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. He's got to be strong. He's got to be fast. And he's got to be fresh from the fight. Did I did I read that well? <laughs> yeah, that's a good quote. That is a good quote. Yeah. Yeah, love the big... Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the best. And dreadful fight. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of good stuff. And I never played Final Fantasy. That is that is the one thing I missed from childhood. And um, oh, the soundtrack is excellent. Professor Geek says Stephen King, who wrote fiction, is the truth inside. Oh, he who wrote he wrote fiction is the truth inside the lie. We can share true emotion with a character even if our situations differ. Is that like Melody linking us to the permission to feel? Yeah, yeah, let me let me think on that. Um, the truth inside the lie. Uh, we can share true emotion with the character even if our situations differ. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it goes, it goes back to this idea, this probably age old I idea is that you can speak a completely different language with a completely different grammatical syntax from, from me. And we would still understand music, even world music. I, you know, I, I remember listening to Moroccan music for the first time and just loving it. Um, actually, it's like I have these these students, these you know, these American kids, and one of the one of the songs that we sing, uh, we we work on out of this book, is this uh, Kenyan warrior song. And everyone's like, "Yeah, I love that." I, I was like, "Yeah, isn't it great? It's it's got that uh, you know pulse. It's got that." It's it's harmony that that's not harmony as we know to be theoretically as as we would compose as Western composers theoretically, but we resonate with it. Um, it it's it's a universal understanding that transcends all language, and and it's the same. Of course, it's the same with storytelling, um, and and the hero's journey. See, guys, we're all coming together. <laughs> it's very poetic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, those who fight further, I love that one. You know, if I if I get the instrumentation and if I if I can play violin, dun 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 uh I don't think I did those. And then it does it 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 tops it off with there's do 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 um, do you guys, my game, my game, I, I missed Chrono Trigger too. I, oh, Chrono Trigger's great, but I never got to play Chrono Trigger. Never, never. It just wasn't available at that GameStop. <laughs> um, but, uh, what was the, oh, my game, the game besides Donkey Kong, uh, all, all three games, even game three guys, game three is legit. Um, uh, this was my game. Oh, let me let's see. I I'll give you the right title. Forgive me. I she's based in Japan, but um, I don't know the name of the composer. I, I would recognize it if someone spelled it out for me. Uh, yes, yes, yes. R P G. That was my childhood. I hope you, some of you know that. I hope some of you know that. If you're 20 or younger, maybe not. But now I will say this. I'm sorry for people who are younger than me. And I'm sorry for people who are older than me. Being a 90s kid was the best thing ever to have happened to me. 90s was the best. So that's, that's all I got to say. We kind of have this romantic idea of the 80s. But I've been hearing horror stories about the 80s. Um, so I was, I was happy to be in that innocent decade. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, this is true. This is, this is worth, uh, saying Zahn's trilogy remains the sequel trilogy. 
Yeah, we should just call the the new movies a parody. It's not a sequel to anything. It's just it's man, Rise of like you you have to actually abandon all emotion, all visceral emotion, and just straight up laugh. It's like you guys can't be serious. Like when you look when you you look at the the the, the scenes, and I only watched the sequel trilogy to do a music analysis for you. <laughs> Um, but when you look at the sequel, especially at the last installment, it's like, were these th these writers were joking the whole time. They 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 they're about gotcha the whole. They're they're waiting to to they're gonna they're on the fiftieth anniversary of Star Wars. They're gonna say to us to our face. Of course, they're not, but they're gonna say to us, guys, this was all a joke. It was all a joke. Now it's not funny. It's not a good joke because it's, it's got a lot of people mad and, and I'm, I'm not visceral. I'm not emotionally mad because I, I just, I don't consider it Star Wars. It's, it's, it's fan fiction. It's not Star Wars. Oh, uh, I, I, it bothers me guys. Like I understand, I understand um, the professor's grief when, when we do see the deconstruction of our beloved heroes and that needs to be addressed and that needs to be talked about but i i don't understand the grief and, and maybe you you guys have this grief and i i, I want to be uh sympathetic as, as best as i can but i i want to encourage you don't be saddened you know when you watch the 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 sixth episode that's luke skywalker's hero's journey and it finished there it finished there don't like I, I see so many people or I had, especially with The Last Jedi and, and looking at YouTube and all that. I had seen so many people say, I can't see the sixth episode without feeling so sad where he's going to, to become. I'm like, that's he's not gonna be coming. He's not that's not Luke. That is not Luke. I will give you my full hundred percent affirmation. That's not Luke Skywalker or confirmation, I don't think I used the word affirmation correctly. You could correct me on that, uh, fan man, correct my English, because sometimes I say the words wrong. But 100%, that's not Luke Skywalker. That's Jake Skywalker. That, that is that is the parody of someone pulling a cruel, practical joke. So I hope that helped you guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I mean, it... You don't you don't think Saturn that movement of age and time is that's kind of creepy stuff. That is chewy. Neptune is beautiful. Yes. Why not? Why not? I'm a brass fan too, or fanfare. Yes. More thumbs up if not done already. <laughs> Please chop mine off. It's doubled since last. I know, man. And I've been talking about music. It hasn't been just Star Wars. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Wow, I'm, I'm a little excited tonight. I think it's Fan Man. I'm like, I feel like I need to up my game with Fan Man. Like, he has, he's this other intellectual. I, I feel like I can't, can't even remotely compare. Troy, nice to see you comment. Uh, every office hours you join, I wonder how you haven't run screaming. I don't scream. See, I'm not visceral. I don't. I I don't condemn. I don't respond. I just pray. <laughs> that being said, I think you tend to elevate the stream uh, just by being there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I hope so. I don't want to be some like like nun, like overbearing and overbearing nun. You know, looking over your shoulder. That's not. That's not. Uh, I hope I don't give that impression. <laughs> not, not, not dissing on nuns either. They, they do good work. Uh, Muhammad says uh, to both me and Professor Geek, uh, it's quite grand in the scope. Many Twitter memes tell the tales. Now they are lost to time via the unlisted videos option. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it kind of reminds me though, uh, if, if you guys are talking about this, uh, man, I'm, I'm sorry, professor, that your, your book study video was taken down. I was looking at my liked videos and then I saw a, a video blacked out. I was like, what video did I like that would do this? And then I was like, which, what was it? It wasn't, 
you know, it was, it was just recent that I liked the video and I was like, well, I don't really like many videos often. I, I'm not like, I, I don't constantly like videos. I was like, was that the book study? I was like, that's weird. Uh, now I, I didn't, and I'm sad because I, I didn't read chapters 19 and 20 at the time. So I wanted to hear what you guys had to say. So I guess I'll never, never hear it. Uh, but that's, that's really strange. I don't approve. So Brian's favorite, Sword in the Stone, Aladdin, Lion King. Yeah, good. I like that. <laughs> I rented the original Pink Panther. Yeah, it's it's kind of... I like the set pieces and, and all that. that it's it's kind of nice, but it, it's uh, very strange. And the, the beautiful princess, she she had a lot of good lines and she had, she had kind of a, a serious air about her that just didn't fit. It just felt weird. Oh, by the way, um, big Al, I, I saw, I saw your Twitter on, um, on, uh, your tweet on, on your um, review of Scoob. Can you do like a YouTube video? Just no spoilers. I probably won't watch it anyway. Um, but I saw the trailer and I have thoughts. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of thoughts, but I was just like, I grew up with Scooby-Doo. So when I saw that, I was like, this is a little strange for me. <laughs> I grew up with Hanna-Barbera and it was just very, just from, from the outside perspective looking in, it looked really weird seeing them in a modern setting with their old clothes. That was one thing that tripped me up. I, it, was, it was uncanny valley to me. It didn't look right. And they looked way younger. They, they didn't look like teenagers, like, you know, almost fully developed. Now, I watched them as, as a kid. So teenagers, of course, even animated ones looked um, fully developed as adults. But uh, Daphne, she looked like she was like nine. And they're driving a mis mystery van or something, um, mystery machine. I was like, this, this, look, this doesn't look right to me. But uh, that's because I grew up with Scooby-Doo. So maybe I can't change. I don't know. Yeah, I would, I would sing, man, but I don't, I don't think I can recover my voice tonight. But that was, that was, that's a, that's a high, that's a high song to sing. I like, um, what song do I like? Just be a man. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's the best. I'm never going to catch my breath. Say goodbye to those who's near me. It's, it's, it's actually quite high for me to sing. I'd have to go lower. Good, good lines too. Good lyrics. Uh, the inspector shorts are more dialogue driven, like Looney Tunes. Oh, that's interesting. So it's more witty compared to the more slap slapstick style of Pink Panther. Man, I love slapstick style done right. The oh, that's that's the thing with the movie. That that's that was the thing with the original Pink Panther movie. Um, the slapstick wasn't good. There were there were some moments. There were I laughed maybe three times in that film. Some of it was good. Some of it was just over the top. Like really, like I, I was expecting that was going to happen. Or really, the character that it, like it, it, there was one moment where you you could tell the actor was told to do it. <laughs> it was like there was no reason for the character to have accidentally done that. Um, so slapstick humor done right is really good. And the animated shorts are good. The animated short before the actual drama was hilarious. I just, I, I was ready. I was so pumped. I was so pumped to be just like laughing the whole time. I was like, only the animated short was, <laughs> was funny enough. Um, so yeah, but the dialogue that, that, that's the thing is I like it that it has no dialogue that it relies only on music and animation and, and timing. I think that's why I, I like the, the, the short cartoons. And just get him getting out of antics. It's fun. I'm reminded of Danny Glover's lines from Angels in the Outfield. I, I can't do his voice because it's probably been 20 years. Let's keep the profanity down. I made it, no swearing. 
I'm sure that was the worst impression because I don't know what it sounds like. Uh, wow, it's 11.20. Okay, if I catch up with the chat, guys, I, I, will, I will call the shots. I will, I will, I will wrap it up. Fan man, go, go to bed because I don't know if Big Al or the prophet told you, but I'm really bad at closing my uh, live streams. So I try to catch up with chat, make sure everyone has been heard and said and read and all that. But uh, yeah, Daniel Craig says Ryan Johnson ruined it in a different way. He gave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. He um to all of JJ's worthless mystery boxes. That was JJ's problem, the, the mystery boxes. And then he turned the fans and gave the middle finger to the mythos. It's really weird. Now, here's the thing. I have insight about this whole thing because I was in the academia. I was in the liberal arts academia for probably a good eight years straight. And thankfully, I was naive not to pick up on these, these nihilistic ideologue cues. Um, but artists, they want, they're more like social experimenting. Uh, experimenters, exper uh, scientists. They're like they they're not not officially scientists, but they like to social do social experiments more than they like to do art. They think art provokes people sometimes. Um, but th that's the thing is like it it it, it does it doesn't pr well. I actually you know what if. If Ryan Johnson, and I'm, I'm not here to speculate, I'm not here to get in the minds of anyone besides myself. It's not fair to get in the minds of anyone because I simply don't know unless I hear. But it, if he had come from that kind of education, um, and if, if he's in Hollywood, that, that still continues, that mindset. But if he, has, if he had come from that artistic academia um, background, that whole social experiment of totally flipping like topsy-turvy just a 180 on on a 40-year story um just to do a social experiment if if that was a motive that would not surprise me in the least because a lot of people in those circles tried to do that and they try to do it often now that's not to say he did that intentionally but if that were the case i would not be surprised <laughs> Oh, Melissa, please <laughs> cut, cut down some of that language. <laughs> I like you, though. Uh, keep, keep coming to the chat. Uh, oh, um, Muhammad, I will watch The Mandalorian. I'll, I'll try. Uh, uh, Disney has my money for, gosh, two more weeks, 18 more days. Um, so I will watch Mandalorian. I, I won't. I won't stick around for season two, especially if they introduce Ahsoka. Um, uh, yeah, I think a lot of the music goes for Williams and and kind kind of gives up. Well, I'll look into that. I I would love your take. I would um, be happy to give you mine. Yeah, actually, yes. Um, light motifs. Uh, he actually Williams, at least for um, Star Wars, didn't really work in light motifs. Maybe a little bit. Um, in fact, I don't want to go too much into what I want to say next year, uh, next week. But uh, uh, he he actually does a little more motivic writing uh, in the sequel trilogy, and actually that that's actually a problem. Uh, he works in themes. Light motif is 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 a motive um, that 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 comes in and out or builds up. So you know Beethoven's da 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 da. That's that's a little motive that Beethoven uses to expand the rest of the first movement of that Symphony Number no. Five. Um, I don't think he uses light motifs in Star Wars, but he does with a certain character in The Force Awakens. So I will talk to you guys about that next week. I hope to have time to do another commentary video like I did uh, for for Clone Wars. Well, yes, yeah, uh, that's absolutely true. Nothing is new under the sun.
And now you guys are, are, are labeling themes from Final Fantasy characters. Yeah. I don't know them, though. I only, I, I, I well, T Tifa's theme is kind of coming to me. I, it has a name, but I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but um, I had this redheaded girl want to do it for the recital. I was like, are you sure you don't want to do William Tell Overture? <laughs> She's like, I want to do this one. <laughs> What hilarious or hilariously awesome? That was a good one, man. Yeah, that's right. Okay, gosh. <laughs> oh, you know what, Daniel Craig? Uh, let me refer you to David Stewart. Uh, David Stewart, uh, David V. Stewart. He he's a great channel. Um, he he actually. Even I think he's invited a couple of his friends to talk about what it was like living in the 80s. And I don't know. I mean, I was born in the 80s, but uh, late 80s. Well, not that late, but. Um, so I, I, I never experienced the 80s to my the best of my recollection. So I, like so how he how he talked about the 80s was like, wow, 90s is kind of kind of innocent sounding compared to what the 80s. So I could be wrong. Like, if any of you guys grew up in the 80s, just let me know. And and by grow up, I mean, like, you were kids from, like, 4 to 17 or something. Ah, oh, yes. That is true. I could just hear the Rare Wear logo or the, the theme for or the intro music before... Um, Diddy's Conquest, Donkey Kong 2. I, I hear that right now. I understand you calling it fan fiction, but it's not written by fans. Um, well, I mean, no, it's not written by sincere fans, I don't think. But um, but I think the well, but but fan fiction out there can be bad too, right? It can be misleading or off, you know. I'm not saying all fan fiction. I, I've never read fan fiction. I'm sure some of it's great, um, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of fans have written terrible pieces of uh, fan fiction. So it's kind of like that. Um, you see, the thing is with J.J. Abrams, and actually, I got this idea. I could, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about this, but uh, David Stewart talked about um, how Ray's kind of like this wish fulfillment of like. If you were put in the Star Wars universe, you'd want to meet all these cool characters and you what you would want all these characters to like you. I mean, I thought of that as a kid. Like I would think of my favorite world, like maybe I was part of the Scooby-Doo gang and everyone loved me. I mean, I would have been a Mary Sue for the Scooby-Doo gang. Um, I, so I think that is an, an example. I'm not saying it's written by a, a true fan or, um, you know, a fan who respects the work. Um, I'm just I, I, could, I, could, I think I, I'm safe to call it a terrible piece of fan fiction. Maybe maybe J.J. Abrams thinks he's a fan. I'm not going to question that. I might not agree with him, but you know, I'm I'm certainly not going to question if he does think that that it, it's not in any way inauthentic. Um, I I would so so yeah, not not fans, but but I I, I would also say that fan fiction out there can be kind of uh, also. But what do I know? I probably should read fan fiction before I actually, I should probably be a fan of something first and then read it. And then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys are starting these hashtags. Yeah. Oh, it's that guy. Welcome. I'm very sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, I, I wish the, the best for people. I really do. I don't I don't want anything bad to happen to him or or anything. I I mean, I just I, I know the mindset of a lot of these academics and, and these people because the mindset of Hollywood is exactly the mindset that has been it has been with academics. It's they're just on a huge famous platform. And so I, just, I would not be surprised. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Uh, where are you? 
I, 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 oh, it's that guy. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for coming. And I'll probably wrap it up. It's, it's, it's 1130. Um, so. <laughs> it, it, I, it's not that bad. <laughs> I just, I just hear the word art or picture and I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you, Wolf 10 Media. Thank you. I can't see from, from this how many, how many likes I have. Oh, I, I know what you meant. Yeah, for sure. Big Al presents. Okay, am I close to the end? Of the chat? Oh my goodness, I'm 15 minutes behind the chat. Um, Big Al is also good about wrapping things up too when he does his Wednesday afternoon things. I was like, I gotta order to do this. Um, the sequel trilogy will be lost in cinematic history, I think so, uh, and be a sad footnote in a decade or so. Real fans will keep Star Wars alive until then. And I think so. I think so. I don't think, that's the thing is I don't think Luke's, Luke Skywalker's memory will, will go. I think, if anything, I think people, <laughs> I wonder if people will see the sequel trilogy first. And then, oh, like, like they'll think the original uh, trilogy is the prequels. And they're like, oh, who's this Luke Skywalker? It's like, this young kid is amazing. <laughs> Why does he become this deadbeat? I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be like a decade of reading, uh, seeing the films in all the wrong order and then deciding for yourselves uh, what, what is good. And you know, film critics and all these people in the media, they they don't they don't watch these stories, they don't read these stories. Yes. Honestly, typing in the chat makes me feel like I can't write at all. Oh, I love the chat. Like I like that it has a 200 character limit. So I, I have to really think, especially with the book studies, like I have to form my sentences just right. I'm bad about that on Twitter. I can spend like two minutes on Twitter or more just to make sure it's grammatically correct. Correct, and I, I I hope you guys don't notice like that when I'm on Twitter. If something isn't grammatically correct, like even if it's sitting there five minutes, I will delete that tweet if there's no response to it, and I'll I'll, I'll change it. I can't I can't stand that you can't edit your tweets. I did watch Scoob review said it was not a true Scooby Doo movie. It was only the Scooby Doo movie. Oh, that's just too bad. Oh man, you know what was so uncanny? It's so uncanny. It's like. They, they were mentioning things like Netflix and The Rock. It's like, why are they talking about concurrent things? It just, it didn't feel right. They, they shouldn't have had their outfits um, unless it was, it was true to the setting. Nice. Oh, even though my voice is shot, this is, this is one for, one for uh, the archives. Let's get down to business. I can't sing in tune right now. To defeat the Huns. Did they send me daughters when I asked for sons? You're the saddest. I think it's Bunch. I ever met, but you can bet before we're through. Somehow I'll make a man out of you. It's good stuff. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, Owen, oh, I gotta turn in soon too. I have to write. All right. Do 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 do. It's Muhammad that's keeping the chat chat active. Mystery boxes without something in them is bad enough. That's the thing is they should have. Oh. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't like what they did to any of the characters at all, but. The fact that it was just not even a good story just wasn't thought through. Having some cruddy thing in them is another thing, but having having nothing and then giving something <laughs> cruddy to avoid. I say the other word too, but I'm not going to say it online. Um, uh, to avoid outrage is something else. They... Oops. Oops. There was nothing. I think the prof had a video on this a long time ago. There was nothing that Rise of Skywalker, before it came out, there was nothing that, that movie could do to save that trilogy. It was gone. It was gone. And, I, and I've seen people so excited, like, 
Rise of Skywalker, retcon episode A. I was like, why are you celebrating this? You're saying the final act just redid the middle act. And by the way, the middle act is probably the most important act. Of course, all the acts are important, but that's that's the meat of the, the three-act structure. <laughs> anyway. Scoop starts with them meeting his kids, and then there's a montage with... Oh! Okay. Maybe I missed that. All righty. Because, yeah, Daphne looked really young. I mean, they all looked young, besides Shaggy and Scooby. So, um, all right. That, that makes sense. Thank you, Big Al. I guess it meant themes uh, for ideas, which is what it meant by leitmotifs. Yeah, of characters, but it is actually leitmotif is like a musical gesture for a character, a place, or an idea. It, it's easy to confuse the two for sure. Oh, interesting. JJ gave a te TED talk where he explained that uh, what is in the mystery box doesn't matter at all. That's nihilism. <laughs> How is that not nihilism? Oh, I <laughs> said that before I even read that. You have no subject, no plot, no meaning, no reason for action. Yeah, I, I, as much flack as jo uh, Johnson did, and he didn't help himself conducting himself publicly in the way he did on Twitter. Um, but and I'm not I'm not about vengeance and re being resentful. I'm I'm about peace and I'm about forgiveness and love. Um, so I don't want to kind of harangue on JJ, but like people people bemoan about episode eight like it ruined it. Episode eight didn't start it. The first 18 minutes of Force Awake, a Force Awakens was um, uh, very solid. Had a lot of potential. And then that was it. That was it. After 18 minutes, the whole sequel trilogy went downhill. I will talk to you about that, though, more uh, on the 8th, because I, I, I do have some thoughts. I won't go into so much of the writing issues with the sequel trilogy. One is I just don't have the energy. Uh, two is uh, you can hear it on other YouTube channels. Like you have countless hundreds of hours of content on that. But I will talk about a couple things. I will talk about a couple main things that I haven't seen people touch on. In music, of course. All right. I will. I will cut out in definitely before midnight. Um, Cause I have to. I do have to write. Guys, gotta, I gotta write. Gotta write my own space opera, right? I I finished. Um, a scene that I had in mind for years, and it, it was kind of it was kind of surreal because uh, it it worked. But you know, maybe if you guys are writers, do you ever see your your scenes in your in your story like like a film? And then when you come to the point when you're actually writing it, it's like it 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 doesn't work like you had imagined it, like it would work in a film. Um, and so it, it's it's a different experience and it's still the same scene, but it's like the way you're approaching the scene, tra transitioning out of the scene, um, the way the characters are responding, um, the way they're talking. I thought it was going to be more comedic. The scene was going to be funnier, um, but it, it's actually I, I developed my my spaceship character in such a way uh, where uh, he, he has his own conflicts um, as a as a computer. Uh, and he's trying to register with with this this new pilot, which who isn't a pilot. She hates flying. <laughs> um, and so uh, so he's uh, his character development actually is what what changed a lot of that scene. So it, it actually became a more it's still kind of funny. There's still some spots where I, I laugh. I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Um, but it's it, it's a, it's a lot more serious. I, I thought. I thought my, my protagonist there was going to be a little bit of comic relief, but it's actually more serious than I imagined it would be. And that's okay. That is okay. Oh, sounds brutal, Muhammad. I don't know if I want to post that. Yeah. Literature Devil is a... He, he's a good channel. I, I like him a lot. I don't really listen to his live streams. I, I tried to get into it, but uh, it, it it just wasn't for me. But I like I like his video essays a lot. <laughs> no sweat, Muhammad. I was wondering. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, you guys talk about Star Wars and video games. I thought we were going to talk about Melody. No one wants my expertise. That's fine. Yeah, actually, yeah, that, that is true, Muhammad. Um, I get caught up in these live streams as well. Nice. Okay, good, good, good to make that context. Yeah, I, I thought it was Bunch, but I, I never read the lyrics, so it could be Bugs. I don't know. Telltale sign that Force Awakens was bad was when every argument in support of it required The Last Jedi to be good. And that meant the Force wasn't about anything. Yeah. It requires some intelligence to love what's actually good and to call out what's not so good. And I, I think I think Hollywood thinks we're just not intelligent. And I think they're they're missing the mark. Or maybe they just don't care. I don't know. I don't know anything. Okay, I'm I'm caught up with chat. Oh, oh, let's let's okay. Uh, Dr. Y says the only thing I've come to like about the sequel trilogy is the design aspect is one of the few things they have good. I mean, I thought knowing, uh, yeah, visuals, yeah, visuals are good. I thought knowing, um, what I know about Jedi, Last Jedi now, I, I, I did not like it. I did not like, I didn't care for the film, but I thought the sound design was going to be poorer than I imagined. No, it's still great. It's still phenomenal sound design. <laughs> Bummer. My face is getting red and my hair is sticking to my face. So we'll uh, probably call it. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm, 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 uh, I I'm caught up in chat, guys. So that, that's good. So if you have no further comments, which I will not entertain. Uh, yeah, thank you for, uh, let's, let's plug some stuff. Let's, thank you for watching. Let's uh, plug some stuff. I'm still under the two hour mark. I'm so excited. Uh, so live commentary on my channel every Monday nights. We're probably, I have to commute now. So we're probably looking at uh, 9.30, 9.45, 10. Just kind of be on the lookout between 9.30 and 10. Uh, I, sometimes I just want to relax and refocus after teaching and, and driving. Um, so be on the lookout for Live commentary every Monday, every Monday nights, no earlier than 9.30, but no later. Starts no later than 10. Office hours every Tuesday, except not this coming Tuesday, not tomorrow. Um, the professor, uh, Professor Geek, you all know him. Um, he is doing a rewatch of the Maltese Falcon, and I actually got to watch it over the weekend. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm very, very, very much looking forward to um, the the... His, his explaining the noir film. I'm not familiar with noir. Um, and I think I'll be on board. I think, I think I, I got the invite. So um, I would be, I'd be happy to be on board. Uh, I got to listen to some of the music, but um, I probably would talk about the music as I was listening to the music. Um, it's, 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 and it's nice music. I, it's, I, I really did like uh, the music the composer. I, I can't remember his name. I'll have to look. So rewatch of the Maltese Falcon tomorrow night on the professor's channel. You all know where to find him. I don't think anything's happening this Wednesday unless uh, Fan Man, Big Al, Troy, Professor, if you guys have anything going Wednesday. I usually tune into David Stewart's channel. He has something going on live on Wednesday. Uh, and then also the... Is it the last or the second to the last reading of The Last Command um, on Thursday nights on the professor's channel? I need I need chapter numbers, Big Al. <laughs> um, Daniel Craig, my, my commute's not that bad, but it's about half an hour. And I it, it's just between cooking and eating and getting ready for the live stream. It's just too, too much to squeeze in uh, to start my streams at nine now. Um, if I were working from home, it'd be nine. So, uh, oh, good. Good to know, Daniel Craig. Oh, well, that touches my heart. Thank you. Now, I will say this. I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up. If you don't mind, I'll be behind my little black and white profile pic because I don't know. It's just me. 
I don't want people watching me watch something. <laughs> it's just, it looks strange to me. Um, so I will be behind a picture. <laughs> Unless all of you guys, and Big Al included, were to to go live. If it if it was all all of us talking, then that that's fine. Yeah. Or or more than more than three. <laughs> oh, second to the last. Okay, good. Chapters twenty. Oh, oh, actually, no, I think it was twenty-one to twenty-five. Mm, but or was it twenty-one to twenty-six? Because didn't you guys talk about twenty? Now I still haven't read twenty. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, yes, Maltese Falcon tomorrow. Uh, what time, actually, Prof? I, I I don't. Is it ten? Is it ten p.m. Eastern? Um, which would be great. I don't think I could do earlier because <laughs> uh, I have a have a longer commute. I got I got to take the highways tomorrow because I think there might be protesting in my downtown. Um, I don't want to get stuck in that. If you if you don't see me, you're like oh guys, sorry, caught in the middle, caught in the middle of it. Um, all right, let's let's do a recap. So live commentary Monday nights on my channel. Uh, Maltese Falcon tomorrow night on the Prof's channel, maybe 10. Um, uh, book, book, book study, Last Command, second to the last. Um, also, I think, believe 10 on Thursdays. Thank you, Prof, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then if Fanman has anything Friday, if he's still around, he, he probably went to bed. <laughs> um, and Saturday... Nanette, what's happening? Well, you, you have something on your channel Saturday, correct? Um, a, a, a movie called They Call Me Trinity, which Big Al, I kept, I kept hearing in the stream, my name is Trinity. Um, I think I caught the last bit of your, maybe I didn't, I can't remember what I what I saw when, when you were saying that because I was watching Maltese Pumpkin. But yeah, Nanette's channel. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to find Nanette somewhere. It's, 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 I think Nanette, it's your full name, right? We can find your your channel there, and we'll have um, no doubt Troy will be with you <laughs> when 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 you're on board. I believe Al. I, th I may have I may be tied up, so I probably won't be. I might say hi in the chat, but I think that's the week. I think that's the week. Oh, a spaghetti western. That's cool. Very cool. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, guys, tune in for a Fan Man Second Cup Cafe. He does that in the mornings, I think around 10 or, thank you, Troy, uh, 10 or 11 Eastern time. So kind of look around before mornings. And I think that's everything. I think we covered it all. So thank you, guys. I'm, I'm closing up right now. Thank you, guys, always for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some live commentary every Monday, some sound experimentation every Thursday. And until we meet again, keep producing the art you love, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.